What's up guys? This is Thermodynamics, and these are industrial information panels. Yes, they are awesome. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about three different kinds of piping. The first one is flux duct, which carries power. The second one is fluid duct, which carries fluid. And finally, we'll be talking about item ducts, which carry, you guessed it, items. Lastly, we'll be talking about servos, filters, and retrievers. So get poised and pay attention. Thermal Dynamics adds four different types of power cabling into the game called flux duct. And uh, on the left, we have leadstone, which is the weakest type of flux duct, followed by harden, then redstone, then resident, and then cryostabilized flux duct. If you've used thermal expansion before, the recipes will be very similar, or somewhat similar anyways. Um, leadstone is very simple, needing only some lead, and it will give you six leadstone flux duct. Um, if you need to make hardened, you need an invar ingot and plus three leadstone flux duct. Um, you can use either one ingot to make three or three nuggets to make one. Next, the redstone flux duct, which is the same as it's always been. Um, you'll need to make some destabilized redstone, combine it with a redstone energy flux duct, and that will give you that there, and there's the recipe. And uh, the resident will need um, either one enderium to make three, three enderium nuggets to make one. And finally, the cryostabilized flux duct is going to need gelid cryothium along with one of these here and these are pretty expensive and you're only going to get one of them if you're not sure how to make gelid cryothium i do have a video tutorial out on it and what it can do the link will be in the description all right so here's a brief example of why you might want to uh, might want to use different tiers of uh, flux duct um, to send power in different uh, quantities to different places i have my cryo stabilized flux duct here and uh, I'm sending only 200 RF per tick through this leadstone flux duct down to this lava fabricator. So uh, for this example, it's just kind of showing how you might want to send a little bit of, of excess power to a block like this, just to make sure you have lava all the time, maybe. Or you can send uh, like 8,000 RF per tick, which this redstone energy flux duct is sending to this laser drill precharger to maybe send only a limited amount of power to these laser drills because they use so much. And here we have the rest of the power flowing into a vibrant capacitor bank. And uh, these thermal dynamics pipes are pretty compatible with most machines out there. All right, next I'll briefly go over this stuff called structural duct. And uh, basically what you can do is you can take any block in the game just about, and you can combine it with this, and you can make six of these things called covers. And the covers do exactly what you think they do. Um, it's basically like a facade for other mods. You can take these, and you can hide your flux duct, item duct, or fluid duct with them. Now the recipe in NEI is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just talk to you for a second about how to uh, create some of these flux ducts. You're going to need destabilized redstone and gelid cryothium, as I have already mentioned. So you're going to want to take a magma crucible, squish some redstone, and uh, have it set to go to a fluid transposer, and uh, then throw one of these pipes inside of a fluid transposer, and it will fill up with redstone, and you'll get your redstone um, energy flux duct. And the same thing goes for this resident flux duct. You're going to need destabilized redstone for this. Now, for the uh, higher tier beast mode pipes, you are going to need to make cryothium dust, squish it in a magma crucible, set it to a fluid transposer, and fill it up with gelid cryothium to make cryostabilized flux duct. This stuff is pretty expensive. All right, next, real quick before we move on, you are going to need this stuff called Signalum um, for some recipes in the future, I believe with Fluidux and some of our uh, little servos that we're going to be showing you in a second. Um, to make these, you'll just need three copper dust, one uh, silver dust, and a bucket of destabilized, re destabilized redstone. That will give you Signalum dust, and you can melt it down into the forms of ingots, um, make some blocks out of it, or even make nuggets. So that's Signalum. Next, real quick, before we move on and before I forget, you can use uh, Thermal Expansion's multimeter to right-click on these pipes to see how much power is inside of them. Uh, very cool. All right, now let's really quickly take care of fluid ducts. There's three different kinds, temperate, hardened, flux-plated, and you can see that these look different from these, and that's because this one is opaque, which means you cannot see through it, and this one is regular, which means you can see the fluids that are flowing through them. Now, what is the difference between the three pipes? Well, simply mouse over them. This one will say it will break if the contents are extremely hot or extremely cold, and I'll demonstrate that in just one second. This one here, the contents may be any temperature, which is fantastic, and this one um, will transfer fluid and power at the same time. Awesome! All right, so let's find out what happens when I throw 
um, uh, what is this, blazing pyrothium through this pipe. You can see that the pipe is going to start smoking and it will eventually explode. I'll show you the explosion in just one second. Next we have the flux plated fluiduct here and this one as you can see connects to a power source. So if I throw down a fluid transposer right here, right click, you can see that this pipe is transporting power. Fantastic. And since it cannot doesn't matter if the fluid is too hot or too cold, I have my um, gelid cryothium flowing through here, and I will set this to accept fluid just like that. Okay, and it's filling up very wonderfully, and it's powered very cool. Let's flip this on, watch this pipe explode, and I will show you the dangers of using this garbage temperate fluid ducts here. All right, there you go. Devastation. You do not want this to happen, okay? Because this will cause a big problem. Let's nail down these item ducts real quick. We have four different kinds, technically six. So I'll cover that in a minute. Item duct, impulse item duct, fluctuating item duct, warp item duct, regular item duct, as seen over here in opaque and regular fashion. Again, opaque will not show the items flowing through it. Um, item duct will. This might have an effect on lag. So uh, if you're on a server, bear this in mind when you're making your item ducts. Next we have impulse item duct. An impulse item duct is filled with energized glowstone, so be aware of that and energized or impulse item duct will uh, shoot items through just a little bit faster. Next we have fluctuating item duct, which basically moves items at the same speed as regular item duct, except that it can also transfer power. Finally we have warp item duct, which will transport items from place to place instantly which is awesome, but it will come at the cost of a little bit of RF per tick, and if you mouse over these, it will tell you exactly what I just said. Next, I have a brief demonstration about how fast these pipes move items. So, I'm going to click this here. Bear in mind uh, this little button here, or little thing here, showing how many are are inside of that chest, and you can see that uh, this middle pipe here, which is the impulse item duct, is winning over the fluctuating item duct and the regular crappy item duct. Now we have not gone over servos yet, and I've installed the slowest servos to send items, so don't worry, we'll cover that in just one second. I just want to show you how much faster the impulse item duct is than the regular and fluctuating item duct by default. All right, now this is the best way I've been able to um, figure out how to demonstrate the warp item duct, which I have now installed on the middle here. So you can see that it works fine without any power. Okay, I have the same servo installed. We'll talk about servos in a minute. And you can see that this is slowly filling up with four items at a time. Now, what happens when I apply power to this pipe? It changes, and then all of a sudden, it will start warping items over to here a lot faster. Again, it all depends on the servo, um, but basically every three seconds it's going to move blocks over to here. Um, so this will transport items instantly from here to here, and it's all dependent on the servo that you have installed. Next we have servos, filters, and retrievers, and there are five different kinds of each. The first tier over here is just basic. Okay, so this is called a servo, this one's called a filter, this one's called a retriever. And then we have a hardened version, reinforced version, signal version, and resonant version. And what is the difference in all these here? Well, again, simply just mouse over it, and uh, you'll notice that uh, there are a whole bunch of different things that you get um, once you get all the way down to this resonant servo. So um, the mouse over function is very self-explanatory, so I'm not necessarily going to talk about all these things, but basically the farther down the tiers you go, um, the faster and better um, they become. Next, we can or we can use a crescent hammer or in bar battle hammer um, to manipulate these servos, and I will show you that right now. First, we have the basic servo here, and that's what I installed in those pipes that we just took took a look at. And uh, we don't have very many options on this. We just have three spaces to put items, and we have a blacklist or whitelist, and we can uh, only increase the stack size up to four items and down to one. So it's pretty crappy. The resonant servo here has a lot of different options, and uh, we have blacklist, we have metadata, NBT, or dictionary, mod owner, nearest, furthest, random, round robin, and a stack size of up to 64, along with some redstone control and a space for a lot of different items in here. Okay, so the higher tier that you have, the more options that you have, and I'm not actually going to show you each one of these here, um, but you can apply them directly um, to your different types of item duct, fluid duct, or uh, flux duct. Actually, I'm not sure you can apply them to flux duct because that doesn't really matter. Um, and you can use a crescent hammer to, uh, if you right click, it'll take off of your 
take off your servo extractor or whatever you put on there and uh, if you right click it will just add it to there. Um, furthermore, if you uh, right click this with a crescent hammer or the uh, battle wrench, it will disconnect from different things. Okay, so these are the tools that you're going to use to manipulate these pipes here. Okay, and I can attach this here, this here, and so on and so forth. All right, now there are a lot of these things, but uh, they're pretty simple, and I'm going to break it down for you so, so you can understand it. Um, if we go ahead and look inside this resonant servo, I'm going to talk about each one of these things very quickly. Blacklist or whitelist, blacklist, any items that you put up in here will uh, not be allowed to get sent by this uh, this resident servo here. Whitelist will only allow, okay? So if I whitelist this, it will only allow ME interfaces to pass through. And you can whitelist a whole bunch of different items. Uh, metadata will, uh, as you can kind of see here by the picture, will determine the difference between durability and tools. Uh, NBT, I'll demonstrate you um, for you in a second with uh, bees. Um, or dictionary, if you have multiple different ORs from different mods, you can either set it to ignore um, or use OR dictionary, um, which will either single out one individual OR from a diff from an individual mod and only send that one, or you can um, send any, basically, let's say copper OR, which I'll show you in a second, any copper OR, no matter what kind of mod it is, to your target destination. Um, next, we have Ignore Mod Owner, which is really awesome. It will basically recognize the mod that an item is from, and you can filter by that. And we have uh, these options here, which I will demonstrate. Okay, so I'm just going to set this to nearest first and show you what I have inside of this diamond chest. I have Ore Dictionary. This is going to be my demo in Ore Dictionary. Okay, so I have uh, four different types of copper here. Next, I have four different items from Draconic Evolution, which we will have a tutorial out on soon, hopefully. Next, I have uh, all these things here, all these different types of drones, which I will uh, show you um, how NBT data works. And finally, um, this durability option here. And I'll show you how you can send items with durability, or no matter what their durability is, um, into a certain filter. So filter is going to be the thing that we're going to talk about first. Now, what does a filter actually do? Well, what it does is it uh, basically filters different items based on the parameters that you have set into a target inventory. So you can see here that I've installed resonant filters on four of these different chests here, and each one of them has different parameters, okay? And uh, this one is set to uh, basically ignore metadata, so any iron pickaxe, no matter, no matter what the durability is, will go into this chest here. Um, here. Any type of drone, no matter the type, will go into here because I'm ignoring NBT. Um, here we have uh, the dr Draconic Evolution mod, basically. So I'm saying use mod owner and whitelist. So anything from that uh, mod, Draconic Evolution, will go inside of this chest here. And finally, I'm using OR Dictionary here. So any type of copper ore, you can see that I only have one specified here, but I had four in the chest. Any type of copper ore will be sent over there, okay? And I'll show you how they're being sent in just one second, but I just want to demonstrate this here. All right, sorry, I had whitelist on. Let me flip this on here. There we go. All of our items are going to their each individual chest. So you can see my Draconic Evolution stuff's going here. All my drones are going here and finally all of my tools are going here so you see everything ended up in the right place all right so if filters will filter items that are already passing through an item duct based on the parameters that we've set inside the filter how are the items actually getting to where they go you can see here that I have a resonant servo installed and we'll be talking about servos and retrievers next to break these down very simply, a servo sends items, a retriever gets items, a filter filters items. Very simple, very self-explanatory. Let's take a look at the servo and how it behaves in a few different circumstances. In order to make this demonstration a little bit easier for you to see, I have set this servo to um, send only one item at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this on. And uh, there's a bunch of redstone blocks inside of here. And you can see that they're flowing to this last chest up here. Now, why is it doing that? If you take a look at NEI, you'll notice that uh, you have all the different pipes that we have already talked about here. But there's a problem. There are more pipes than that. If you open up creative mode here, you can see that there's a lot more pipes than uh, what shows up in NEI by default here. And what is not showing up are these things called vacuum and uh, warp ducts. Okay, so there's item ducts and there's uh, uh, fluid ducts, warp and dense. And what do they actually do? Well, first of all, don't 
don't worry, you can make these things. Um, so vacuum, for instance, is uh, this recipe here. Um, you can make them, it just doesn't show them. Um, it's unfortunate, but it is a thing. And uh, what do these things do? Well, the vacuum item duct, which is right here shown in green, basically makes it so that this pipe or this connection is the closest in the network. The dense item duct here makes it so it is the farthest away in the network. Now, what in the world does that mean? It's important to know um, how these pipes behave, both fluid ducts and item ducts. They will, by default, send items to the nearest inventory. So if I did not have this vacuum item duct here, the nearest inventory would be this block here, and it would automatically try to fill up the nearest inventory first. But since I have this vacuum item duct here, it's saying, well, it doesn't matter what other connections I have in the network, this is the closest um, connection. So when I flip this on, it's sending all of my redstone blocks up here to that block there, which is technically the closest because I have the warp item duct on there, or the vacuum item duct, excuse me. If I set this to furthest first, it's probably just going to fill up eh, this one here, okay? So this one's closer now because uh, that one doesn't really matter, and it's sending it to the furthest one, or what it thinks is the furthest one. Um, random will basically just randomly send a whole bunch of blocks to any different place. And round robin will uh, distribute evenly. It'll go here, 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 and then refresh. And you can see that happening right there. And finally, if we have the nearest first, it's going to go back and send it to this one here. Now, had I not had this uh, vacuum item duck down here, this would be the nearest inventory, okay? So you can see how that has an effect there. So this one farthest, it brings it to the farthest on the network, and this one makes it the nearest on the network. Pretty simple. You'll also notice that I have one single chest in here, and it is not sending the chest, it is sending all of these redstone blocks. That is because I have blacklisted checks, or chests, and uh, had I not blacklisted chests, bam, that thing is going to disappear, and it's going to end up over there in the nearest inventory, okay? So that's how blacklist and whitelist works. These are servos, servos send items. And finally, we have retrievers. And retrievers will basically take a look at all the connections on the network and all the inventories that the retriever has access to because of the impulse item duct or fluid duct. And it will retrieve any items that we have set to retrieve inside of the retriever. I just said retriever a lot of times. Um, right now, I have it set to whitelist redstone okay so what it's going to do is it's going to find all the redstone that it can out of the target inventories on its little network here so we have some redstone in here and there is no redstone in here so let's go ahead and flip this on we're going to start sending some redstone and then we're going to activate our retriever here and it's going to start pulling redstone out of here okay now this is set to farthest first so it's going to by default pull from this one if I have this set to nearest first, it's going to start pulling from this. And finally, if I have it set to random, it's just going to randomly pull from either inventory. And if I have it set to round robin, it's going to pull from each of the different inventories in a round robin fashion. Ah, very simple. Since I have not shown this, I will show you that uh, you can increase the stack size. If you shift click this plus, it will increase in large increments uh, instead of single clicking, which will take a long time. And uh, you'll see that once I click this, it's going to start sending stacks of these things and filling up very quickly. Okay, so if I wanted to retrieve stacks, I would crank this up here. Um, incoming total max items, this is a neat button here. Okay. It will only allow a certain amount of incoming items. And if I click this here, it's going to start yanking all of the redstone out of the network and throwing it inside of here, okay? And we've maxed out the number of max items, so I'm going to crank this down here. Okay, and it's going to pull the rest of the redstone blocks out of that inventory, okay? So that's retrievers filters and servos and one more quick thing I want to mention about filters is that they have this neat little option called prevent oversending and basically what that does is is if you have a servo sending items down a network and into filters if said inventory is already full and it cannot fill any more it will not send them okay if you have prevent oversending on 
that is right here, okay? It will not send any more items down the pipe, which might cause a little bit of lag if you have way too many items going. Um, if you want to allow oversending, um, basically in an instance like this, um, uh, what, oh geez, how, how would you want to use uh, prevent oversending? Um, if you had these or items being continuously sucked out of these chests and you wanted to make sure that it was always full and that there was no um, time gap between them, um, you would want to just continue to send, 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 send items up to here and keep them full. Um, if items are in a pipe and they have nowhere to go but they have already been sent, what will happen is they'll get locked inside one of these filters um, or something else and you'll have to click them to get your items out of there or wait until the target inventory is empty. Okay, so this is a pretty neat little feature also that I didn't really discuss. Uh, prevent over sending. Won't clog up your pipes. Now for the most part, this is pretty much implied, but just in case, I'm going to say it real quick. The resident servo, when attached to warp item duct, will move items through your network very quickly. It will extract at a rate of one stack every half a second. You can see that we're moving a whole ton of items here. They're passing instantly from this chest to this chest, and we can see it filling up very quickly. So when I mentioned before that the servos matter, the servos do matter. Mouse over them to find out. This has been Thermal Dynamics. If you liked the tutorial, make sure you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Check us out on all of our social media outlets here. And as always, guys, stay poised.